Compared to somebody like Antonio Vivaldi, whose music is known the world over today, the music of Giuseppe Antonio Braschinello is rather less well-known. But it doesn't necessarily mean, just because it isn't known, that it isn't worth playing. And certainly the music of his that we've performed so far suggests that he was a composer of great talent. Relatively little is known about Braschinello's early life. We think that he was born in the city of Bologna in northeast Italy, but the earliest documentary evidence concerning the life of Braschinello finds him in the mid 1710s working as a valet to the Electress Teresa Cunigunda Sobieska, the Electress of Bavaria. She was living in exile in Venice at the time. Her husband, the Elector, was living in France in exile, and the two of them didn't really see each other for about a decade because of the fluctuating fortunes of the War of the Spanish Succession. On the conclusion of the War of the Spanish Succession, both Elector and Electress returned to Munich, and Teresa even wrote to her husband and said, could I bring Vivaldi as Kapellmeister? The Elector wrote back and said, no, he's too expensive. Rather more likely that he was already very happy with Pietro Torri, who was a resident Kapellmeister, but whatever. Teresa Cunegonde did bring back to, to Munich with her, she brought Braschinello. And it's in Munich that he's finally listed as being one of the violinists employed there at the court. But his stay in Munich didn't really last very long. He arrived in 1715, but in 1716 he was off again, following the death of Johann Christoph Petz, who was the Oberkapellmeister of the Württemberg court in Stuttgart. Brescianello decided that he would have a tilt for this job and applied initially for the post of Musiches. He was successful in applying for this post and moved to Stuttgart in 1716. Although, if you look at somebody like Vivaldi, who composed around 500 concertos, Vivaldi says he composed 97 operas in a letter of the late 1730s, you know, a, a goodly amount of sacred music, choral music, cantatas and sonata. I mean, Vivaldi was incredibly prolific. If you compare the output of Brescianello to that of Vivaldi, you might think it's rather meagre, but again, just because he didn't write a huge amount doesn't necessarily mean that it's of a poor quality. Indeed, music such as his one opera, Tisbe, that he dedicated to his patron, Duke Eberhard Ludwig, in 1718, is just a cracking piece of music. And the Opus One concertos, his only publication, again, uh, 12 beautiful pieces. And then there's this rather interesting set of six orchestral suites and, and a chaconne for strings that survive in the University Library in Rostock. This is quite interesting because if you look at the bulk of Brescianello's concertos and symphonias, you would say that they are probably overall written in an Italian style, though with a nod to sort of German thoroughness in the use of harmony. But the orchestral suites that survive in Germany are rather more composed in the French style and thus makes Brescianello pretty much the only Italian composer to have actually composed works in this genre. There is another guy called Fortunato Kelleri who wrote orchestral suites, but he was at least half German, half Italian, so that you can sort of understand why he might have done that. But Brescianello, Italian through and through, pretty much the only person to write in the genre of the orchestral suite. 